shuffling the head and moving the body, this is the traditional Uyghur dance. At this kindergarten in Shufu County of Kashi, a group of toddlers are having some fun, which is part of their daily curriculum. Founded just two years ago, the kindergarten now has around 230 students. All of them are of Uyghur ethnicity. My son started here last year. We don't pay a penny. He eats three meals a day at school, and books and heating are free too. At a typical language class, two teachers are instructing at the same time, speaking in both Mandarin and Uyghur languages to the students. We believe teaching students Mandarin will make it easier for them to communicate with people of different ethnicities. And learning Uyghur language is equally important because it's part of their ethnic identity. Bilingual education is now a common feature in Uyghur kindergartens and schools in Xinjiang. Improved educational quality has led to more Uyghur parents willingly putting their children in local kindergartens. A couple blocks from the kindergarten, this here saloon tells another story about the change that this village of 3,000 people has experienced. 29-year-old Alinisha Ablumiti opened the salon last year. Thanks to a local women's federation, which organized a free hairdressing training for people like her, the cost of equipment and rent are fully covered. Now, Alinisha makes around 2,000 RMB per month, comfortable enough to live on in this village. Women in our village used to be afraid to go to the hair salon, putting on makeup, or even dressing themselves, because those things were not allowed in the eyes of extremists. Now the environment has changed. Alanisha says she is finally doing her dream job, making women in her village feel as pretty as they want. Speaking on these changes, 46-year-old Wei Bangzhong, the party secretary of this village, shares some more examples. Three years ago, there were Uyghur residents who would reject government-subsidized services like television because they thought of these things as non-Muslim influences. They would even stare at Han people in the street with hostility. We spent a lot of time and effort helping them become more open-minded, learning more about the outside world, and understanding the government's policies. In order to better communicate with local villages, Wei began learning the Uyghur language on the day he arrived. The local government has been providing all kinds of material and industrial support needed, such as free tuition and vocational training to improve villages' living. Wei is proud that his work has paid off. Cuo Hui CGTN, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region.